If you get the culture right, the results come. between your performance and your priorities. If you're not playing as much as you think you're playing, you should be. If you don't feel the love, if you will, from me or from our staff, there's a reason behind everything we do. But I want to tell you that you're ultimately accountable for that. I'm going to say it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done, but then I'm, gonna also, I'm also going to say that's going to be even harder than what I just said. I have no grasp. I, have, I know I have no grasp as to how hard it's going to be. And honestly, it's as hard as I want to make it. I can make it the hardest year of my life, and I, I plan on doing that. That's uh, what I'm most proud of with our guys, is, is just seeing them kind of take initiative on and off the soccer field, because they want to be you know, the best soccer players they can be, the best team, but also just the best people. It's a learning process. Every time you get it wrong, you figure out a path for the right answer. Ethan. Uh, hey. <laughs> oh, mm. uh, Trust. 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 tougher than the rubber band, still flexible. During preseason, you know, we did an activity every other day, you know, related to selflessness or motivation or team building or discipline, something along those lines. <laughs> All right, Nick Sikowski, your Waukesha and Kettle Green. Me, no offense, take no offense. Now, there wasn't any in these two scenes, but I can find some later where there is an interaction that is really demanding and really powerful and would be if you are not understanding that it's meant out of love and making you better, then you would totally just stop and fold over instead of rise up. The only way it's a failure on Monday is if you decide to not progress from that. Right? So to me, that's why failure is not existent. Because, you know, if I fail today, I, okay, I'm going to learn something from that failure and I'm going to try again on Tuesday. In preseason, each guy wrote an obituary of how he wanted to be remembered as a person, as an Augsburg soccer player, if he died right at the end of the season. And we laminated those and pasted them in each guy's lockers. and. You know, they then were staring at them every single day when they came in here to change clothes or to hang out or get ready for practice or whatever. So they're constantly thinking, is what I'm doing today leading me towards that? I thought that the upperclassmen did a phenomenal job of welcoming such a big incoming freshman class. Uh, and I, I applaud them for that, and I'll forever applaud them for that. A lot of freshmen come in super nervous into the season, don't know what to expect and everything. But all of us older guys try to just make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home, and have them not worry about it. And we cheer them on from the start to end. We're a big old family here, and we just have each other's back. All these new freshmen, and not just them, but all the returners have to prove their worth. And that's super exciting, because I think they're realizing the level uh, that was brought in and these guys are going 110 miles an hour and the returners are like, well, no, I'm going to go 115 because they don't want to, they don't want to go ahead and get, and get pushed away, which has been making, it's made for a really good first, uh, first few sessions. So it's exciting. Just 
competition's healthy. You guys, sort of the same concept as the last time with the 2v1, except for now we're gonna go three versus two. Okay, three versus two. You guys are going to be brothers for the rest of your life. This is a program that solidifies a bond that is very rare. And Holter does a very, very good job of keeping that bond super tight by inviting people like me back to the program, by doing kind of happy hour type events or um, events up in the conference room. So just, just stay really connected because the guys you're sitting next to are going to be in your life for life. The advice I would give you is, of course, just when you can get to a level where the opinions of other people don't matter to you, you're just going to be in what's called the zone. I'm sure you've heard being in the zone. You know, all the greatest athletes are in the zone when they're performing at their highest level. And when you can focus only on yourself internally, sometimes it's a team sport, but you have to be selfish. You know, if you you have to be selfish so that you can perform and be the strongest you for the team collectively. Not every season for me in the, this is my 15th, have been um, joyful because there's been challenges that have been um, taxing, stressful, straining. That doesn't mean I'm gonna stop working and battling through it. That's just part of the you know, challenges for me. I, I, everyone knows I love it. I don't like it easy. I want it to be more difficult because it makes me better. As a, as a leader, as a mentor, as a teacher. But there's nothing like walking into a space where you feel positive energy. And I absolutely love our locker room right now. And the kids that we have in here are just top class human beings. And the individual meetings that we've been going through the last couple of days have exposed and highlighted their maturity, their understanding of what's really important in life. and. I'm just so happy to be working with people who, who are processed thinkers, like they want to grow and get better. And if they win, they win. But they want to push and grow. And I just love it. I just love it. Anybody ever been really sick and try to perform well on a soccer field? It doesn't work very well. You don't perform well if you're not very healthy. In other words, your performance is a reflection of your health. There are basic things that you guys need to pay attention to on a regular basis. Hydration, that means drinking water. Good quality nutrition, we'll discuss that in more detail. You need to get adequate sleep. How much sleep is enough for you might be different than how much sleep is enough for your partner. That also can change from day to day, right? Sometimes you're more beat up, you need more recovery. What time you go to bed makes a massive difference in how well you recover, even more of a difference than how many hours of sleep you got. There's two types of foods. There's foods that make you more healthy and there's foods that make you less healthy, and that's all there is. That's it. We use the game, we use soccer, we use this experience to make you a better person, a better man. And for me, that's just more important than the game. But the game's an incredible vehicle to experience lessons that are relevant, especially as you mature and get older a little bit, you understand more what was happening while it was happening. So now the crew has it, or, or even if Sully has it, what do we, what does Luke need? A partner, why? I, I say this, I'm like, Luke, you're the wingman at a bar. Okay, <laughs> this was my analogy to the coaching staff last night. Luke's the guy that goes to the bar, he goes with a couple buddies, He's the wingman, kind of working it all out, but he's not going to win the job by himself. He's a friend. He's a great friend. That's awesome. Those characteristics are important. Creating a sense of like love in the locker room, and, and that'll translate to the field. Uh, it's it's already happening with the guys. You can see it. Like the freshmen, you know, they're some of them are nervous, anxious, whatever, but they're fitting in well with the guys, like everybody's got each other's backs, it's awesome. And I think that'll translate to the field and, you know, making a, a MIAC tournament run or NCAA tournament run would be awesome. Um, I, you know, I think we would all love that. And, but those are results and results are results for a reason. You know, they're at the top of the pyramid of the hierarchy of needs. You gotta, you gotta establish the, you know, lower levels of the pyramid first. There's definitely a, a large positive vibe going through the locker room. 
Um, not to say that's been absent in the past, however, just coming in uh, after day one and meeting the group, uh, there's been a lot of positivity, a lot of relationship building, um, and that's something that uh, can't be fully coached, but it can be something that can be cultivated, and that's ultimately what this program is about. I got G. Alright. Cyber! Tio. Tio. Give me give me your thoughts on that victory. It's an easy dub, easy sweet. You know, uh, we came out here confident, and uh, guess what happened? We, uh, yeah, confidence that? happened, and uh, the easiest game came out and uh, went on the next game. Tell me about that loss, how you're going to bounce back. We're going to bounce back. Uh, we got to keep the ball and not let it hit the floor, for one. And I'm a caring partner, I'm a good worker, I'm a team player. And so anytime someone says something to you that kind of rubs against that, you say you're a team player, but you just skip the morning list. You might immediately just go, you're already in the box, right? Because you don't even realize that I was here this morning. Um, so, so sometimes you can have, uh, you can find yourself in the box without having a unique uh, instance of self betrayal I would say the characteristics of this team that are different is everyone wants to be here, everyone's committed, everyone wants to just play soccer and have fun and like work hard in this program. And now you got to continue to support each other, right? Positive words of encouragement all the way through this thing, push each other for more, cover for each other, everything you have, three points, let's go. Let's go. Three. One, two, three. The program is just... It's more than soccer. I mean, our, our, our mantra for you, for soccer, for life, is it's really put to, put to the test here. It's, the Hulk really looks to develop you as a person, so that's the you part. Looks to develop you as a soccer player, that's obviously the soccer part. And he sets you up for life after that, whether it's with uh, making you a better student, making you a better athlete, just overall a better person. And I think that's just how I take my leadership role, is that I can be relatable to the players in that way, too. I can help them out. I can be a... A uh, catalyst for things like that, and I, I, I really try to be a person that you can talk to, you can be trustworthy with. I just want to be that guy for the guys in the locker room because I know some some of us don't really like Holker some days, and I hope I can be a guy that's pretty pretty consistent, pretty pretty constant, and pretty pretty content with most players in the team. To play for this program is a way to learn all about yourself, whether that's how you perform best, what's going to make you break. Um, you're challenged every single day and this program just puts you through the ringer and really shows you your true colors. Being a senior here, I, I had a very difficult role that I had to accept um, for the last four years. So going into it now as my last year, it really is important that everybody understands their role because everybody's role is different actually. And you know, when everybody works together like that and they all know their role, it's incredibly important for the whole program to be successful. This year, I think it's one big collective group, and that's going to be super positive for us. Whoa! I like the game, but oh, it's so four, cool. four, four dollars. Whoa! just playing to defend to get better at defending 
We're not just playing with the ball to get better with the ball. We're playing with both of those elements to get a result to try to win. Okay, any questions? Anything else? Anything you guys want to say? Let's do it. His coach was Tim Bunnell, and he got us into Bangu, and that kind of like opened up the door to soccer for me. And then throughout growing up with him, him and his wife were Augsburg people. We practiced at Augsburg, and that's where I got to Thunder. And then I got to a coach who reminded me of Hulks a lot, which is Matt Holmes, which I bet you know maybe, Coach at Hamlin. And so he was like a hard ass, and this was only at like 12 years old. And so I learned a lot from him. Um, he's probably my favorite coach growing up. And so when I met Hulks, and you could see how similar they were and how much I've played at Augsburg, I was like, I don't want to go anywhere else, even if it is just for soccer. And so that's how I got to Augsburg. It was basically that connection I made when I was young to the two coaches. I've had other coaches growing up who were lenient, who were just there for soccer, but those two made me better in life. He's the reason I recycle my so I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but like, that was an impact, I guess. It's just something he did. He's a hard ass, but it's what I need in my life, and that's why. Oaks is good for me too. So yeah. We we had strong leadership. I mean that was really the key. I think that's been in all of the years that I've been here, the teams that have had the most success on the field, it's a direct relationship to the type of leadership we deal with and see on a daily basis in the locker room and, and everywhere we are. And we were incredibly fortunate to have Daniel Hedstrom you know, leading the line this year. He, he just exceeded all expectations in that arena. And there was no doubt we were going to be successful because he just wasn't going to allow for anything else. And when you have that kind of leadership in the locker room and on the field, your team's going to be just fine. A couple times where I was on up, up and down, but I knew that every, every single time I stepped in the locker room, someone was going to be there to support me. Um, and there were conversations that I had with guys off the field that said, hey, I'm a little mentally tired today on a long day or physically tired after this game. And I just made sure that I told other guys, hey, let's pick this guy up today. Let's make sure he's feeling a part of the team. And I think everyone else just started doing that by themselves. And it was super fun to see that by the end of the year. one person on the inside to, to drive the bus and, and he was a pretty skilled driver. What does it take to be a good leader? Um, I think it takes a lot of putting the guys before you. Um, you know, it, you always have to clean up at, after people that when they don't do their job correctly, you're the, you're the guy that um, kind of gets people rallying around you. You're, you're the best communicator on the team, you're the leader, you're the guy that people can look to off the field, on the field. And uh, most importantly, I think you, you have to be the best representation of what the program is about. Everyone go together, on. stay positive, right? That's right, let's go. Oh, on three, one, two, three, oh, let's go! It's not easy and you can't do it right away. I think that's the greatest thing to understand is that a lot of the players that we've had here who have transferred from Division One institutions assume that they're going to be at a level above the group that they arrived to join. And they learn a very difficult, challenging lesson. But I think in the end, that makes them better and stronger and it strengthens the bond in the team. But there's definitely going to be a stage where the hiccups are going to dominate um, the environment. And I know that. And I just have to be patient. Because in time, and we're, we're working through that process right now, currently, with this, with this group. And I think we're right on the edge of getting it where we want it to be. The other part of this, too, is the locker room won't tolerate 
an arrogant asshole. <laughs> just won't. And I think that's great. And, I, and, and now we're at a, a point where I'm really, really happy with the people that we have in our space and the people that we work with. And I think that because we have good people, it's hard to, for somebody to come in and say, I'm a little bit better. We talk about one of our core values here at Augsburg with the men's soccer program being industrious. And, uh, you know, I think you could apply that value to, you know, Division Three soccer in general, but we are really about it. We try to embody it every single day. Um, we, we make the resources we have work. You know, obviously we don't have tons of money here in this athletics department um, or, you know, at the Division Three level, but but we do a lot of fundraising and <clears throat> that's why the alumni relationships are important. Um, and we make do with what we have and, and not only make do, we thrive on it. I think that's a huge part of being industrious is, you know, it's not only just making what you have work, it's using what you have and thriving on it. And I think we great, do a great job of that. I mean, just a perfect example, the other day, like, you know, we've got these four super nice goals uh, out in the field right now. Nice goal frames, brand new nets. We took down the old ones and, and physically built those ourselves and we do it before and after every season. Uh, that's just you know one specific example of, of the kind of work we do here. I did some work with the women's hockey team early in the season and I walked into their meeting and I was gonna give a presentation and kind of help them sort out where they wanna go and what they wanna do and let them lead that discussion. But before I could even get started, they were giving each other these shout outs and it was words of encouragement or you know, reflection upon a, a behavior or something that some other player did really well. And some were really, really thoughtful, some were silly, um, but either way, it just you could see that there was a sense of vulnerability from the person who was saying it and, and real honor from the person who was receiving the compliment. And I thought that that was probably a better version of what we do, um, but maybe we're not yet ready to be that vulnerable. So on, on our side, we would write post-it notes so if, if somebody had a good performance and I would lead that and model that and write a note, a personal note, like, hey, this is something that I thought you did just incredible today, I wanna to recognize it, put the post-it note on the wall. And then it built and the walls became filled up, you know, with those comments. And then it moved to people writing on everyone's locker and putting it there. So it was really a vulnerability and words of encouragement and creating a culture of, of care and togetherness. And I think that those things are really centerpieces for a successful organization. So, you know, may, maybe in the future we can be more like the women's hockey program and, and a little bit more honest and transparent face-to-face -face verbally, but, you know, it's a, it's a good starting point for us. I would, I would guess that each of our programs, you know, each of the teams here, and in particular the teams that are, that are the more successful, are spending a lot of time on each other. You know, and, and it's not as much about the X's and the O's or the little technical issues and elements of the game, but more about those interpersonal relationships and, and that culture within the locker room. And I think that you see it here on campus when you walk around, that, that there's a tight bond with all the groups and there's no, there's no, um, it's not shocking to me that we're successful on the field because of that. You know, you see all these post-it notes all over the locker room and anytime somebody did something good or needed a word of encouragement or whatever, another guy on the team or a coach uh, would just leave a post-it note on their locker or on the wall where they could read it and I think that was a huge you know boost to, to everybody at some point throughout the season. It's um, again just a, a sense of community uh, uh, that's based on values that I respect and, and that I want my own kids to, to uh, witness, observe and, and hopefully to be instilled in their own lives. This week's third week.